Hi, my name is Sue Belcom. I'm the Marketing and Outreach Coordinator for Farms in Medina. Welcome to my kitchen. Today, we are going to be showing you how to check the pH of your home canned goods. Now, you might be asking yourself, why would I have to do this? If you're a farmer market vendor or anyone who direct markets your canned goods um, at local fairs and nonprofit events, you've probably received a letter and or a fact sheet from the North Dakota Department of Health. This fact sheet is guidance for anyone who sells home canned goods at farmers markets. This is a statewide guidance sheet and so that you should be able to sell at any farmers markets. In addition to the new rules about testing the pH level of your canned goods, you're also going to need this tiny little sign on your booth that says your canned goods, baked goods are homemade and not subject to state inspection. This should be on a large sign with block letters easy to read in your booth. So in addition to posting a sign saying that all of your goods are made in a kitchen that's not been inspected, you may sell things like tomatoes, salsa, apples, cherries, peaches, naturally fermented foods such as sauerkraut, but only if the final pH of the food is 4.6 or less. So in this video today, we're gonna demonstrate in three simple steps how you can test the pH of your products in your own kitchen and therefore comply with the new guidance document that the state has issued. So what you'll need is your recipes that you use. When the State Department sends an inspector on to a farmer's market, you will be asked to produce not only the record of when and what your pH level was in your particular product, but you will also have to show them your recipe so that they can check to make sure that it is a safe recipe. So. In addition to your recipes, you're going to need a notebook in which to record your pH levels and the date that you take the tests, and you should bring that with you always to the farmer's market. You'll need a notebook and a pencil, of course, if you want to do the recording. You'll need some distilled water in which to make a slurry. You'll need your pH meter, which can be purchased from Hannah Instruments, and that information can be found at the end of this video. You'll also need buffer solution in both 7.01 and 4.01 to calibrate your meter. You will also need a couple of small glass containers in which to put your buffer solution and of course you're going to need some canned goods. Now you do not want to use things that you've just pulled out of a hot water bath. You want to allow them to cool properly, seal properly, and then use everything at room temperature when you begin your test. Additionally, you will need a couple tools that you'll find easily in your kitchen. One, being a good blender. Two, a spatula a scissors to open the pouches, and a little tiny screwdriver, like the one that you would use for fixing your eyeglasses. And this is a Hanna Instruments meter that costs about $33. I also bought packages of pH buffer solution for about $16. There's four packets of each in the box, so you have four chances to test your pH on, on different days. This meter is brand new, and so the first thing you want to do when you open it up is take off the tip. This part of it is called the electrode. This is the checker for all practical purposes. In order to season your meter, you just need to put it in a little bottle of solution of pH 7.01. All I did was open up a packet of this solution, pour it into the bottle, and that's been soaking in there for a couple of hours. Once that's done, it should be seasoned and when you put it away to store it, there's a little glass bulb down here that you never want to touch. But you always want to put a little bit of that pH solution in there, wet the tip and cover it back up again and then you can store it in a cool dry place in your cupboard away from kids and pets. Now I might look like a mad scientist, um, but I happen to know that this is a fairly safe procedure. However, you always want to be on the safe side when you're working with chemicals in your kitchen, even if it's a simple acid solution like this. So you want to make sure your countertops are cleaned up. If you have very sensitive skin, you will want to wear rubber gloves and then be sure and wash everything. Um, all of your little bottles, rinse off the uh, pH electrode down here and anything else that you use to test the pH of your food. You can use the dishwasher or you can wash in warm soapy water in the sink. Okay, 
So now that the meter has actually been what we're going to call seasoned, we want to calibrate the meter. Now you must calibrate your meter every time you check a batch. Now, as far as the state health department is concerned, if you use the same recipe consistently, you measure carefully, you cut your food in the same size chunks, and you're using vegetables from the same garden and kind of in the same season, you should be able to test a batch just once and be fairly certain that your pH is going to be maintained throughout the course of the season. However, we do not want anything ever to happen that would cause us to have to disallow people selling things at farmers markets. So please be on the safe side and check your pH often. And don't forget to keep really good records. That's a very important part of this whole process. So what we're going to do first is we're going to check to make sure that our meter is going to read our slurry correctly. Now, to do that, you want to once again remove the tip from the electrode. And we're going to actually, since it's been soaking in solution all day, we're just going to rinse that off under the sink. And we're going to lay that very gently down. It is a precision instrument, so you want to treat it that way. Okay, we have a pH solution, 7.01 right here. So we're going to fill the other glass container. And please use glass containers. And the reason I'm using these little bottles is because you want the end of your electrode to be dipped in at least one and a half inches of solution to correctly calibrate it. So we're going to grab our handy dandy scissors over here and Nip the top of that packet off. Use a clean measuring cup and pour that solution into a clean bottle. Your meter has an on off switch. You're going to turn your meter on and see it has a digital readout up there. It also has two screws, one on the right and one on the left. This one says pH 7, this one says 4 slash 10. We're checking that the 7 reads the buffer solution as 7.01 correctly. So in order to do that, all you have to do is dip that in the solution. Wow, look at that. Oh, 701, 702, 703, give it a minute to read. You see how it bounces around and when it stops, you're going to turn that set screw up there till it reads 7.01. Oh. There. When I hold still it actually reads 7.01. I'm going to give it another twist. I think maybe the less I touch it the better it will be. Ta-da! We did it! Yay! Now I can call myself a scientist. All right, so we've got that one set. We're going to remove the solution. You cannot save your solution and use it again. So in order to, you have to calibrate the meter every time you test the pH of your canned goods. So it would be the best way to do it if you kind of ganged them all up at once. So we're going to rinse this off. And then we're going to take our solution of 4.01 that we had in our second bottle here, and we're going to use the other set screw, and we're going to check to make sure that the pH on the other end of the scale is going to read 4.01. We're going to give the, the meter a minute to kind of read what's in the bottle. Looks like it's pretty high, so we're going to turn the other set screw to the left and let go of it again. Oh, we're, we're still quite a ways away. Doggone it. Okay, here we go. Takes a little... And there you did it. Now it might be nice, since it's hot in the summertime, to have a soda or beer while you're working in the kitchen. However, 
you shouldn't be drinking or eating while you're working with these chemicals. So with that being said, I'll put down my glass of water and we'll get right on with testing the pH of one of my hand canned goods or home canned goods. And let's do these. These are pickled jalapeno peppers and uh, they're awful good and I hate to waste them, but you're going to have to do one jar for sure from every batch. Open it up. It was properly sealed. I heard it. Oh, it smells wonderful too. Now, the liquid in here is acid, as you know, there's lots of vinegar, but you want to make sure that the pH of the entire jar is at 4.6 or lower. So in order to do that, you want to drain off the liquid part. So I've got that in the colander, and then we're going to put that solids only in the blender. Now, slurry is something that you use when you're working construction. But this slurry, of course, is going to be these solids held in suspension. Now, if there's not enough liquid in here, we're going to add some distilled water, water to, the, to the blender if it's too thick because the distilled water will not affect the pH of these peppers. And since I've never checked the pH of this before in my entire life, I'm kind of excited to see whether or not these would qualify for sale at the farmer's market. I did add a little bit of distilled water to this and so as you can see I kind of got something the consistency of pea soup. Guess I didn't need my spatula after all. Okay I'm going to give this pH meter a little rinse so that it doesn't have any of the buffer solution on it anymore and we are going to drop this into the slurry and we're going to swoosh it around a little bit and then we're going to let it rest. Do not get the top part of your meter wet. It's just not a good idea. The electrodes can get wet and they can also be replaced. So as long as you keep your meter safe, dry, and store it in the dark, you should be able to use this meter for a very long time. Oh, this is excellent. The pH, let me write this down. You might want to kind of like code your goods. Uh, we date our batches, but you might also want to give it a kind of a identifying name that you make up that you will recognize which batch, however you want to do that, equals a pH of 3.33, oops, 3.35, on August 1st, 2011. Um, and underneath that, you want to put my recipe. So, according to the fact sheet given to us by the State Department of Health, it says if my pH value is 4.6 or lower, then this would be a safe product to sell at your local farmer's market. That's really good news. Once you're done, Checking the pH, you can rinse this off and you can check the pH of another jar of canned goods if you wish. You want to always store your meter in a cool, dry spot. Oh, let's see. And we saved our little bit of pH solution here. We're going to wet the cap with a little pH solution, number seven. And we're going to stick that end on to protect the bulb and put it back in the box. That way it'll be ready for use the next time. If it does dry out before you use it again, then you'll want to just swish it around in a little bit of water to wet that bulb again. And remember, you must always start over with fresh packets of pH solution. And all the information on where to buy the meters, where to buy the pH solution, and actually, where to find some really awesome recipes from NDSU Extension can all be found at the end of this video. 
And remember, if you have questions, don't hesitate to call me or the State Health Department or your local extension agent for more information about testing the pH of your home canned goods. And remember, we just want everybody to stay safe. Thank you.